Why hello there, and welcome to this video. This is your host, the Cassette Master, coming at you again at a thousand miles per hour. Today, we will be presenting a very special reel-to-reel -reel capstan drive AC bias 3.5 inch reel max reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. It is the Panasonic model RQ102S. Here is the unit. This device was found at an estate sale for $10. And aside from having to clean some contacts in the record place switch, this unit is running on original parts. Poof! Reels appear out of thin air. I want to give a shout out to Noah Davis, who has a very similarly modeled Panasonic unit. This device, as you can see, is missing the cord compartment cover, where the power cord is tucked inside. Next to it is the battery cover which is held in place on, or held securely in place only if the cord cover were to be in place. Because the cord cover is missing, I put tape to hold the battery cover in place so that it would not slide out and then fall out. Also, I want to show you a phenomenon I call cord marks. This is a horrible thing, and any commenters are welcome to say their experiences and thoughts with this incredibly annoying and hated phenomenon. You see the plastic of the unit here is original and then right here it's kind of gouged looking. That's because that's where the power cord had sat for years. And the actual chemicals of the insulation of the cord reacted with the plastic causing it to kind of melt away over time. That same phenomenon is seen on the top of the machine. Here on the top, the cord of the original mic had been resting against it for too long and has put this cord mark right there, actually melting into the plastic slightly. It is a great shame. This machine would have otherwise have been in much better cosmetic shape if it weren't for literal power cord marks. Well, not all power, but cord marks. This is actually also another area where the microphone cord had been touching for too long and caused cosmetic damage. It is a great shame, really. This machine would have been in almost pristine shape. Well, aside from needing some glue right there. It would have been in almost pristine shape if it weren't for the unfortunate cord marks and the loss of the AC power cord cover. I'm about to plug this unit in. I want you to listen carefully when I plug it in. You hear that little relay? Unplug it. Turns off. Plug it back in. The little relay picks up. The relay inside this unit is to switch between battery power and AC power, which I think is a very nice design. Sometimes you meet people and they introduce themselves and they introduce their families. It's a common occurrence to meet people and for them to introduce themselves to you, but not all the time are you introduced by a time traveler. I want to welcome an introduction by Sue Barton introducing herself and her family all the way back in 1975. Recorded on this machine. Oh, loved one <laughs> is mom, or kid, or mother, who is upstairs right now and who's also making cookies who might be burning right now. And then Mom has four children, Bob, or Robert, whose girlfriend is Susie, who lives in Fullerton, California. 
And then there's Mark, who's working welding. And Martha, who's in Tanglewood. And me, Susan. So, really. And everybody's, and all our father is Dad, Dr. Martin. And, um, I wonder if this is not, Mom's supposed to be making pasties today. And really neat Kodak cookies. They're chocolatey and bad for me. <laughs> but they're still good. And I have to look at the planetarium tonight. And we're packing because we're going to be moving in August. And we have 75 boxes. And the radio is on CRB. Was, not anymore. It's 12.17. Going on 12.18. <laughs> not yet. And, um, let me see. Atticus has just gone down. Saw so I'll call him. Atticus! Atticus, come! Come here, Pop! Oh, what a good boy! Come here, come on! Today is October 30th. The day before Halloween. 1975. Martha is going to be Queen Victoria. I don't know what I'm going to be. I'm not even going to be anything. If I'm going to be anything, I'm probably going to be an old lady. <laughs> Fascinating to say the very least. The earlier recording was probably done earlier in 1975, where she mentioned that they would be moving in August. When finally comes a recording done on October 30th, which we're only two days shy of the 42nd anniversary of that recording being now, being that the date is October 28th. 2017. Now, there are some blank tape after that point where I made a recording on this unit. Hello. This is a recording being performed on the Panasonic RQ-102S reel-to-reel tape recorder on the 5th of August, 2017. Almost a whopping 42 years after the last recording heard on the tape. That is nothing short of incredible. Using the same machine that recorded the last recording done on October 30th, 1975, Testing one, two, three, testing record one, two, three. song you just heard was by my uncle Jack probably in the uh, probably either the late 80s or the early 90s or so Jack, by Jack Klein, or whose actual name is John Klein, who I was actually named after, first name-wise.
although my other name, Ricky, which comes from Richard, was named after another uncle on my mother's side, Richard Pierce Milner. Testing out a Corona cardboard box speaker as a microphone. How does it sound? Hear that again? Got a Corona cardboard box. Testing out a Corona cardboard box speaker as a microphone. How does it sound? You have just heard recording quality at three and three fourths inches per second for both voice and for music. We will now do some recording tests at one and seven eighths inches per second. And now this here, where you hear the frequent starting and stopping, was because of the problem with the switch here not making good contact to have the amplifier come on fully. Well, that is the amplifier's audio connection be fully making contact to receive a good signal from the head. I really like hearing this on here, so I'm going to let it play a little bit. Matter of fact, we're going to record the same song, except at 1 and 7 eighths. So brace yourselves, but first we're going to be doing a recording at 1 and 7 eighths inches per second. So of course we must remove the capstan sleeve, because this unit uses a capstan sleeve to change the speed. It's not the most user friendly in the world. I'd much rather have a speed switch, but it's better than having no dual speed system at all. Go to a smaller diameter capstan and run to half speed. And now we'll be making a recording. Now, unfortunately, this unit does not change equalization for the speed. So the audio quality is not only going to be muffled, but extra muffled because it does not add any extra pre-emphasis of the high frequencies during recording to make up for the slower speed. Some of the nicer recorders actually will change equalization. The UHER 4000 reports a good example. If you notice on a UHER 4000, this isn't about that machine. I shouldn't talk too much on that device. But the, basically, if you change the speed on a UHER 4000 report, you'll notice that the amount of static coming out of the amplifier is greater at the lower speeds because it's also it's trying to emphasize the high frequencies on playback. But it also emphasizes the high frequencies even more on record. That's a properly done machine, though. This unit here was designed, I believe, with the intention of of making decent and good quality recordings at three and three fourths and was equalized for three and three fourths. Therefore, one and seven eighths sounds far poorer. It could have been done better if they had more pre-emphasis and proper equalization for the slower speed. We're now making the recording at one and seven eighths inches per second. This is using it with manual level control. Although this machine boasts both manual and automatic level control. Right now in manual control, you can see the meter is easily overdriven. With a level all the way up, I can speak at arm's length distance and it still picks up my voice well. If I speak up close, it overdrives, so I turn the volume down to get a good level, where it does not overdrive as I speak. Now, we'll turn it to Easy-Matic. Easy-Matic mode is basically Panasonic's fancy way of saying automatic level control. So now it's running it with automatic level control. I am speaking at arm's length distance and it's not doing that really as good as the higher sensitivity did. But still the machine is working well. Now perhaps it could just be the connection on the switch or perhaps a capacitor. I did not recap this machine at all. It is running on original capacitors which for the most part must still be good. Although there could be an issue with the uh, automatic level control not being as sensitive. Um, but aside from that, though, I'm able to make good recordings. Let's see how this sounds. You notice you hear the sound of the amplifier just a little bit, but it fades out as the, because the amplifier was turned off and the filter capacitor drained its charge. We're now making a recording at 1 and 7 eighths inches per second. 
This is using it with manual level control, although this machine boasts both manual and automatic level control. Right now in manual control, you can see the meter is easily overdriven. With a level all the way up, I can speak at arm's length distance and it still picks up my voice well. If I speak up close, it overdrives, so I turn the volume down to get a good level, where it does not overdrive as I speak. Now, we'll turn it to Easy-Matic. Easy-Matic mode is basically Panasonic's fancy way of saying automatic level control. So now, it's running it with automatic level control. I'm speaking at arm's length distance, and it's not doing that really as good as the higher sensitivity did. But still, the machine is working well. Now, perhaps it could just be the connection on the switch, or perhaps a capacitor. I did not recap this machine at all. It is running on original capacitors, which, for the most part, must still be good, although there could be an issue with the uh, automatic level control not being as sensitive. Um, but aside from that, though, I'm able to make good recordings. Let's see how this sounds. So you can see the audio sounded acceptable for voice recordings, although the high frequencies are greatly diminished compared to the earlier recordings that you heard. Now we'll have a music recording of my Uncle Jack's performances by my Uncle Jack, or music by accident. Now there is something wrong with the volume control in this machine. If I have it all the way down, it still tends to want to uh, allow some volume through and some signal through. So I actually had to adjust the volume on my computer to get the level down to acceptable levels for this machine. Even if in an easy matic mode, it remained too sensitive. This song is I Can't Believe This Is Happening by music by accident, a.k.a. my Uncle Jack. Playbacks. This unit also boasts a fast-forward function. Interestingly, you hear the sound in fast-forward, but you don't hear the sound in rewind. Another quick voice recording will be made at 3 and 3 fourths. Testing the unit running the device at 3 and 3 fourths inches per second. So we'll have this little adapter here which just contains a little button cell to power this condenser mic. I've had this little, here's a lapel mic I've used on a number of my videos, especially my mechanical pencil videos, the At My Desk series, My Mechanical Pencils 5, My Mechanical Pencils 4, all I use this lapel mic. Now, I had it plugged directly into a camera earlier, but I've actually had originally had this little module with the lapel mic when I originally got it back in 2008. But um, I actually never got around to using this little module until 
just recently because I just never got around to going to the hassle of getting a little button cell for it. Power light doesn't turn on, but it is on. You're using the lapel microphone now. We're going to see how this device sounds using a condenser mic. Testing the unit running the device at three and three fourths inches per second using the Sony F96 dynamic microphone. The reason why the um, this microphone sounds a little bit different than the recordings you heard earlier done in 1975 were because the old ones were done to the original mic. I do have the original mic to this machine somewhere in storage, but um, it's the same. It's just one of those little microphones like that goes with the Concord F20 and stuff like that. And it's not as good quality as this microphone. This microphone is far superior. Matter of fact, I'm curious how this would sound using a lapel condenser mic, so I'm going to try that now. You're using the lapel microphone now. We're going to see how this device sounds using a condenser mic that is clipped to my shirt for even better sound quality. Uh, yes, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video of the Panasonic RQ-102S reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape recorder from the, I believe, late 1960s. So it would have already been a few years old when the recordings in 1975 were made. This device was found at the same estate sale that I acquired the strange gaff rolls to oh! go. And that's when I noticed the tape started jumping and I was about to run it off the reel if I ran it for much longer. So the thing to notice about these mics is they the uh, lapel microphone actually um, didn't sound much better really actually the lapel microphone had less bass response and it did not improve the trouble response and the reason is because is the limited frequency response already of this machine I believe because normally the condenser mic is going to have a little bit is more sensitive on the highs than you're going to get with the dynamic mic, but the dynamic had a lot more full tone sound quality in the in the lows, a lot more rich sound than the lapel mic did. But things that also are well used, you know, like the camera for the videos, this lapel mic is capable of great sounding bass, as clearly shown in the At My Desk series, where the bass may be a little bit too uh, overpowering, if you know what I mean watch the video of the At My Desk series and you'll know why. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video of this machine. The Panasonic RQ413, excuse me, RQ4, no, excuse me again, RQ102S, reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape recorder, portable unit. <sighs> Presented by yours, Bloody, truly. Live long and prosper.